Hi Virgo, welcome to your April reading. Today, Venus moves into Pisces. For you, that's really important because it's all about relationships, but the important ones, the long-term ones, and as you know, there's such a difference with you between the acquaintances and the friends and the loved ones. Very regimented, right? It's all very compartmentalized. And that's good, it's healthy. Three of Pentacles, King of Cups, bottom of the deck is the Nine of Swords, and then there's that rebirth. So, Venus moves into Pisces, and your relationships, the long-term ones with in the romance realm, but also how people view you, your financial standing, your standing in the corporate world, your standing amongst your friends and family, everything becomes highlighted. And perhaps not in a way that you're necessarily very comfortable with because it makes you address existing gripes, existing, hmm, what do you call it? When a Virgo doesn't like something, but they won't do anything about it. That needs to be solved before anything positive can come from this energy. Let me make a little more sense of this. So you would think from these first four cards that, oh, okay, well, I guess it's not a great, no, it's actually a great month for you. Great, great, really, really, really good. It's just that you want people to get you. And if they don't get you, then it's easy to fall back on well, I should have just not said anything and just stayed in the situation that I was unhappy in, but I couldn't really articulate it. I just wasn't happy, I wasn't satisfied. If someone, if a Virgo leaves a situation like that and is out here in the world and doesn't encounter someone that gets them, they'll feel like they've made a mistake. They left a secure shore for the unknown and here in the unknown where they were hoping to be understood, at least more understood than what they were in, they find no understanding. And that is too painful to bear. It rocks your sense of security. You can't deal with it. The cool thing about April is that people do get you. There's lots of people who get you and wanna get you and things that you used to take out on other people, things that happened to you in your childhood, things that probably have something to do with your attachment style, you stop doing that. You stop taking them out on other people because you understand them. You understand what you're doing. You can see through your own bullshit. You can see through your own programming. And that makes you that much more attractive. Not that you need any help in that department. If your relationship, friendship, business partnership was hanging on by a thread, if there was a weaving of distrust and infidelity or dissatisfaction, then there is this amicable but inevitable break. And that doesn't mean that it's not painful, you know, and that doesn't mean that you won't doubt it but that doubt will quickly turn to exhilaration when you realize how much freedom the choice comes with. But you know, it's if you can stomach the risk again, because that, you know, that first part when I was saying, well, what if nobody out here gets you? That's really scary to you. And I get that totally. But I think the point of April is to teach you that you moving to and into an unknown space is better than being 
you moving to an unknown space is better than you being dissatisfied. You learning how to maneuver in a new world, a new career, a new friend group, a new relationship, um, a new relationship status, right? There is nothing but benefit in that for you, even though you would like to go from secure situation to secure situation. Not that you want to go from, you know, a long-term relationship to getting married right away, but just that sense of like, I'm leaving something comfortable. I want that same sense of emotional security out here. I want someone out here to understand me again. And April saying, no, it's, yeah, that's great. And people will understand you, but you're missing the point. The point is that you should want to do these things for yourself, not because someone out here can also affirm you and somehow fill those needs, but that you learn to give yourself the appropriate things so that you don't have those spots open for people to fill those needs. Not that you necessarily can feel, fill those needs for yourself. It's just that when you're taking care of yourself, your needs change in relation to other people. There are a lot of things that we want other people to do for us because we're not taking care of ourselves. And when we are taking care of ourselves, they lose that burden. We no longer ask them to carry that burden. Um, and that makes all the difference in the world. I don't, I, I apparently all my phone, I, my phone is off, so I don't know where that dinging is coming from, but I have a pretty good idea of it being a Virgo. So that's funny. There is a new business venture astrologically coming up for you. Just a little reminder that this is Jungian tarot. This is not predictive tarot. This is not predictive astrology. This is just noticing the seasons and the cycles and looking at these archetypes and thinking about how your mind is processing things this month. So that's what we're doing. A new deal or something big that can really change your life. Okay, astrologically that is on the horizon for you and here it is. And it has everything to do with, you gotta work with what you got. You know, if you're waiting for that moment of like, everything's gonna be perfect and I'm gonna have everything the way I want it, true to Virgo form, you're gonna miss it. So whatever you do, whatever you like to do, whatever you're good at, whatever you're holding off on, stop waiting for that perfect moment. For all intents and purposes, this is the perfect moment. And you can, you can set yourself up, like you can change your life. That's just the way your luck is set up right now. You can change your life. You can pay off your debts. You can, but you should pay off your debts anyway. Um, there is this desire, this like kind of exaggerated desire to be seen, to be felt, to be heard. And one of the best ways that you can do that is to pay back people that have done for you, given to you, bled for you, sweated for you. You know, be generous in your paying off of debt, but also in your praise and in your inclusivity. Um, that is the way to healthily fill this need right now you have to be seen. Because if you try to do it any other way, um, you run the risk, <laughs> you run the risk of doing a lot of work for nothing because without that component, it just doesn't mean anything. It doesn't stick. It doesn't take. It's, you get too involved and it becomes too much, you know, this, this right side up is like, You've got to put all of yourself into this. This is going to take all of you. But this is like you're putting all of you into you, not into the thing. So don't let your ego get control of this really important moment because you want to be seen. Use wanting to be seen to be, you know, really kind to other people and acknowledge other people and acknowledge the role that they play in your life and also acknowledge your body for working as hard as it does and acknowledge your mind for being as fast as it is like if you were to if you were to spend this month in gratitude for those things instead of letting them be a burden on you instead of allowing them to kind of be like this magnifying glass in the sun that's shining a hole in you you like see me see me you know you will get all the praise
you will get all the praise and all the attention, all the things that you want, and you'll be able to also save yourself from overworking and save yourself from exhaustion at the end of the month. Because if you're paying attention to how other people feel and being empathetic and really looking out for them, you're also paying attention to how you feel, the part of you that gets ignored, the part of you that gets overworked, right? Your compassion can get ratcheted up right now, Venus and Pisces, instead of taking it a different route of like, I want this, I want that. That's not gonna get you anywhere. It's gonna get your feelings hurt because the thing is, as much as you might want to keep going um, with who you used to be, which may even lead you to lose your temper at some point this month, uh, people around you aren't really down with it anymore. It's not about you choose to evolve and it's your choice and you're gonna do this thing. And people are kind of going to treat you as if you've already evolved. They're not, they're just not here for the, for the trial period anymore. It can turn very, very nasty because there are certain there are certain realizations that you come to, especially about the way you speak to people and the way you communicate, the way you project, that you learn the hard way if you're not being super empathetic and very aware of what a large part people play in your life. You see what I'm going, like it's all weaving together. It all comes together. If you do that, you won't make these missteps, but if you do, someone or other is gonna be there to check you and say, hey, no, no, you can't do that anymore, or that's wrong, or I can't allow that anymore, or um, <clears throat> it can be the better part of yourself saying, you know, I don't like this and I don't wanna be like this anymore. I don't wanna do this to you anymore even, you know. So don't take it all as like an attack or people, this isn't like a referendum on you. People aren't just coming at you from every angle saying, oh, this is wrong with you, this is not at all. It's just that there are certain things in the way that you communicate and in the way that you're behaving with the people around you. Remember, this is all about relationships and these kind of tenuous bonds that we can have with people. Sometimes we don't we don't realize ourselves how we're coming across or what, so, this is one of those months where the people in your life are going to give you a little bit of pushback and say, you know, in this or that way, this thing that you're doing, I don't like it or I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want you to do that around me anymore. And the confusing part can come, the five of wands can come where you say, well, I've been doing that or I've been like that forever. Like, what is your problem? Like, why all of a sudden? And that's exactly the point. And that, and from there, the argument really begins because then it becomes more of an ideological argument. Well, if you know that you've been doing it for this long, why didn't you just stop doing it on your own? And the argument from your side is going to be, why would I stop if you don't stop me and you're letting me do it? Then I'm going to keep doing it. And uh, and then this ideological argument can become very ugly. Okay, so we wanna avoid all of this because it's a nonsensical argument. The point is, if someone feels like their boundaries have been traversed and they are your friend, then it is somewhat your obligation to look at what they're saying and, and, and give it some credence and try and understand their point of view. And if you can see that you haven't necessarily been, you can't go off the logic. What I'm trying to say is you can't go off the logic of this is your boundary and it's being violated, but I've always violated it, so it's okay. No, that's not gonna work. And if you're wondering, well, what's going on with people? Why are they all of a sudden? It's not them. It's Venus in your, especially Virgo rising, it's Venus in your relationship sector that's doing it. It, you know, Venus doesn't want you to do this to people because it knows that ultimately it's bad for you. But sometimes the things, you know, that heal us sting us first and they burn and they don't taste very good and that's just what it is. And as the the witch of the zodiac, you know, I know you know this. Sometimes the medicine is bitter. Usually it means it's working. Love you. Hi Virgo, welcome to the second part of your reading. All right. So the King of Cups is also just a general comment on your love energy. 
Love can find you easily. Especially if you decide that you're not going to be hard on people. If you decide that you're going to be easy on others and you're going to be easy on yourself, it's very possible to find someone that you really, really like. Someone that ends up being very important to you. <clears throat> so, the Three of Pentacles says that you might see someone that on first sight you can tell is someone for you. They have the hallmarks of stability that you like and it feels easy. It also feels like they get you, like they understand you, like in a grown-up way, like they see what your long-term goals are and dreams are and they have the same, coincidentally, they have the same image or a picture for their life. Now, that's great, but if you're already in the midst of a situation, this may bring about the end of that one, but I wouldn't hop from that into this. The temptation of April is that people do get you and you do get all turned around because of it. And you are liking people, whether you're with someone or not, which is also very hard on you because of the guilt factor, because you don't wanna do anything that would hurt someone you love. You can take all of this very exuberant, attractive energy and channel it into business or work. If you do, you can create a lot of profit for yourself, perhaps a new revenue stream that is very long lasting. But it requires you purposefully channeling, deliberately channeling that energy into your work and not letting it just kind of pool around you in these lustful kind of instant attractions. Yes, you see a lot of long-term potential. Yes, they appeal to the part of you that has these really kind of lofty goals for yourself. But if you put everything into it, right? two things can happen. One is that you don't have any energy left for anything else, which means that once, you know, you've done that before, we've all seen you do that before, where you go totally in on something and every other part of your life suffocates and starves because of it. And then the thing that you put all your energy into doesn't end up working out anyway because there's a disproportionate amount of attention being paid, right? Too much or too little, not a good thing. So the way to balance your enthusiasm and perhaps even the relief you feel like, wow, somebody gets me, I like someone finally. Balance that out by temper it, by using some of that energy, redirecting it towards your finances, your business, your creative ideas, your networking. Somewhere in there is the perfect opportunity and it just needs this energy, just a few drops of this energy and it will bloom if you have the foresight to do it. But it's really easy to get super caught up in your feelings and in romance and in intrigue if you happen to already be with someone and just kind of forget about work and about your career and that would be a mistake, okay? It's not that, you know, we don't want you to have fun, but this new business venture could change your life. It could completely change your status. So of course, have a great time. And, and yes, there is a huge sense of relief if you meet someone that you finally like, because we know how rare that is for you. So enjoy it. But the way to make it last is to not put all your eggs in that basket. That's all, that's all. Now, 
when this windfall of money starts to come in, inshallah, when you have this big breakthrough, one of the things that you must immediately deal with is your debts. You have relationships that are suffering because of it, perhaps. You have friendships. You have, you know, your relationship with your parents or your family members. Wherever money has become an issue, as soon as this money comes in for you, it's your job to use that money to remedy those issues. Okay? Now, for some of you, the issue is much deeper than money. For some of you, you may not feel like your friends really see you anymore or your partner really sees you anymore. Now, this could be because you have changed the way you view yourself or you're sick of the way you used to be. And so you've started to make necessary changes. But when you're around this person or around those people, they are feeding back to you the person you used to be. When you look in their eyes, you see the reflection of the old you. And it's such a bummer and it's so disheartening, right? It just like, mm, it puts you in this really fatalistic mindset, like nothing I do is going to change the way I am anyway. Well, that's not true. Anyone who insists on sticking to treating you, reacting to you, responding to you, speaking to you as the person you used to be, and they're not sensitive sensitive enough or observant enough to pick up on the nuances of the way that the ways that you've changed <clears throat> excuse me they don't deserve to be around you simply regardless of what their connection to you is regardless of what they've done for you in the past and what you've done for them you know there is no loyalty when it comes to evolution you evolving and becoming a better you is top priority and it always has been and it always should be and anyone who gets in the way of that doesn't have your best interest at heart, no matter what they've done for you or what your history with them is, and it's time to get rid of them. Now, you are the sign where I get the most emails, the most messages from people who just swear for some reason that I'm talking specifically to you and I'm specifically trying to get you to break up with somebody in your life. And it's always people that have no idea who they are, no intention of trying. But it's interesting to me how so many people are people who are with you, deal with you, want to deal with you, want to date you, are in a casual relation, whatever it is. It's really interesting that those people are the most triggered when you are advised to own your power and to be honest about things that perhaps they don't like. You know, if you're not in a position where you can give a thousand percent and you say, I can't give a thousand percent, that shouldn't be offensive to anyone. But for some reason, it isn't offensive when other people say it, but when you guys say it, it's super offensive, right? Because you should be able to do it all. Well, that just sounds abusive. And if someone's telling you, I can't do this, who are you to say, well, why can't you do it? Of course you can do it. You can do everything. Oh, so now your strength is being held against you? Your strength is now being used as an excuse for you not to be vulnerable? You're not allowed to be vulnerable? There is a whole subset of people in your life right now that tangle you up in this web of guilt anytime you try to assert yourself. They go so far as to personally email and message me, okay, and chastise me for trying to get you to leave them. How guilty and fucked up does a person have to be to someone to think, to actually believe that someone on YouTube is trying to get you to break up with them? I mean, how guilty of a conscience does that person have? How badly do you internally know that you're treating this person that you're projecting onto me? Think about that. That's very deep. Think about that. Think about the people you have in your life who are terrified of you owning your power or terrified and, and dislike anyone, terrified of and dislike anyone who opens the door to you remembering the power that you've always had. This is not something you're regaining. It's something I like to remind you of all the time. Your power isn't something you lose and then you get it back. You always have it. I'm aware that the washing machine is running. I think that there is like a very therapeutic thing going on here. 
like get rid of all this stuff rinse it out wash it out there's you you can't insist that someone always be all the things you need them to be and then they take a little time for themselves and your life falls apart anyone in your life whose life cannot continue normally without you picking up the pieces of their life does not deserve to have you in their life that doesn't make you a necessary part of their life it just makes you a crutch and then you're just as complicit in that as the other person because if you know you're a crutch for someone who doesn't need a crutch, why are you doing it? Does it give you an in? Are you doing it to be a good person? What do you get out of it? What do you get out of it long term? If that's your friend or someone you care about, why wouldn't you empower them instead of letting them use you as a crutch? See, we're getting into some very murky territory here. Because this goes straight to the heart of what you pride about yourself and what people love about you. You're helpful, you're intuitive, you anticipate people's needs. Those are all such wonderful things. But what happens when you're doing those things for someone who should be doing it for themselves? Are you helping them or not? Or are you enabling them? And if you're enabling them, what do you get out of it? And if you get something out of it, what does that make you? We'll talk about it in the extended, yeah? Love you.